Yep. Right back at another video, man. Hey, man, we got one. You're the best player in the NBA, but nobody cares. Hey, man, look, man. Y'all know we came to do, man. Y'all know we didn't come to do, man. We came here to get straight to the point. What we didn't come to do, man, is all that other stuff, man. With that being said, man, let's get right to the video. <clears throat> that sum up excellence, dominance, competitiveness, and the spirit of winning. The NBA's most valuable player award is the highest individual achievement a player can accomplish in their career. Out of the tens of thousands of players to lace up in the NBA, only 35 have won a regular season MVP. But what exactly does value mean when assessing the league's most valuable player? Some would say it's leading your team to victory night in and night out. Others may say it's displaying your dominance through sheer numbers, points, rebounds, assists, that type of thing. You could even argue that a player's value comes in the form of his mere presence, the intangibles that don't show up in the numbers. But however you look at it, one thing is certain. Nikola Jokic has been the most valuable NBA player so far this season. Yeah. And the gap between him and the next guy isn't even close. Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Our friends over at Oh, you can get a pair of everyday earbuds for 15% off. Just click on the player in the league, but as the greatest player of all time. And the man was Jordan had reached legendary stat. In 1997, nearing the end of his days with the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan had reached legendary status on the court. He was widely recognized as not only the best player in the league, but as the greatest player of all time. And the man wasn't even done yet. He led the league in scoring, averaging nearly 30 mm -hmm. points per game. He's still a goal. Efficiency. He made He's still a goal. All defense, and he led the Bulls to 69 wins. Easily the best record in the NBA that season. With weeks left in the season, the MVP award was all but his. Congratulations for enormous achievement, but congratulations, Carl Malone, 1996-97, NBA Most Valuable Player. <laughs> At least he thought the MVP award was his, but instead, the award went to Carl Malone. A decision that, to this day, Michael Jordan can't believe actually happened. Everyone in the league knew Michael was the best and most valuable player. It was obvious. So how could even the greatest player to ever play the game get robbed out of an award that was rightfully his? Well, there's a few reasons. One being voter fatigue. Seeing the same player dominate year after year can get tiring. Voters will go for so sure. Nah, that's 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 facts. Anyone other than the guy who was always rewarded. It'd be like that for real. Just like with Curry them, folks. Just like with Curry them, bro. It's like Curry right now, bro. They run three eight, three championships back to back, so everybody stop. Everybody stop going for Curry, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just because they was so good. You know what I'm saying? Like they won. Wasn't it? Th it was three rings back to back to back, folks. So everybody, man. Any that's how I be though, folks. That's how it is with LeBron too, bro. So many people. Like they are bet against LeBron because they don't want to see LeBron win, bro. Hold on, I think the the, the sun coming out. I could turn on my light. Let me see. Let me see if I turn my light off and it still look decent. Ah, oh, it's great. But yeah, though, with LeBron too, you know what I'm saying? LeBron, um, people hate LeBron so much because he's so good. That's really what it is, bro. LeBron is so good that people don't like him, bro, because he's so good. You know what I'm saying? But in all actuality, folks, they it's just like they don't want to keep seeing you win, but they want it to be diverse. You know what I'm saying? That's why the people got mad at the at the worst for winning three championships back to back. You know what I'm saying? So that's why everybody's not going for them, but it's IV. Point. Narratives. More often than not, storylines, whether accurate or not, manifest themselves in the minds of voters and fans throughout the season, and these storylines tend to outweigh actual results. And no matter how much we try to stay objective on these matters, subjective narratives are bound to have an effect on all of us, even in the case of Michael Jordan. But Mike isn't the only player to get robbed out of an MVP. In 1961, Will Chamberlain averaged 50 points and nearly 20. They said that man averaged 50 game, points and 26 rebounds. Record in the NBA what the hell? Win the regular season MVP. 50 points and 26 rebounds. Average in that? One of the greatest individual seasons this century, featuring his iconic 81. Who got it this time? Shaq. Bomb every other night. The man finished fourth in MVP. Oh, Steve Nash season. got it. But in That's Kobe's tough. case, he suffered from what many other MVP candidates before him and after him have suffered from, a not-so-great record. See, in the 2006 season, the Lakers finished as the seventh seed in the West, a playoff team, but nowhere near the top seed. Damn! The I thought that's just an 18 and 19. The rule that if a player has hopes of winning the MVP, his team must be one of the winningest teams in the league, the standard almost always being no worse than the third seed in their given conference. 
Throughout the history of the modern NBA, only four MVP winners finished the season with a team seated lower than second. And only one player has won the regular season MVP with a team seed lower than third. That player being Russell Westbrook in 2017. In that season, Westbrook was a very rare exception to the rule. In fact, yeah, he was having a triple double this year. Only exception to the rule. The first player in over 50 years to average a triple double for an entire season. A feat that everyone unanimously said would never happen again. And a feat so incredible that although his OKC Thunder only had the sixth seed going into the playoffs, he won the regular season MVP. But then, in the very next season, Russ averaged a triple double again. And yet somehow he finished fifth in the MVP race. It ain't matter the second time. The consistency of the voting process was put on full display that season. Can a player, regardless of his team's success, put up numbers so ridiculous that the league has no choice but to anoint him as the most valuable player? Well, according to Russ's 2017 season, yes. And if we're following this same criteria, Nikola Jokic has easily been the league's most valuable player this season. I but they going for Curry. Winning another MVP, Steph making a run for his third MVP, Kevin Durant or Jimmy Butler being the leader in the race. But hardly anyone has mentioned Nikola Jokic being the most valuable player in the league this season. But all the numbers across the board point to the Joker as the league's most valuable player. In fact, so far, the season he's having isn't just the best among his peers. Jokic is having one of the best individual seasons of all time. Now, we're all familiar with the PER stat, an overall statistic of a player's efficiency and production on the court relative to the rest of the league. Here's a chart of the top 50 NBA players in terms of PER. Here's Kevin Durant, here's Stephen Curry, here's Giannis, here's Jimmy Butler, and here Damn. is Jokic. And if this spot looks almost unreasonably high, that's because it is. Nikola's PER this season is 35.3. Damn! His current single season PER record is 31.9 set by Giannis two seasons ago. And the record before that was Wilt Chamberlain's PER of 31.8 back in 1962. In fact, here's the highest single season PER Michael Jordan ever achieved. Here's LeBron's single season record. Here's Kobe's, Magic's, Bird's, Shaq's, Kareem's. No player ever has come even close to the production and efficiency that Jokic is putting together this season. And if we narrow down the production to just offense, Jokic is still head and shoulders above everyone else. This season, Jokic has an offensive box plus minus of 10.1. The second highest offensive box plus minus in NBA history, trailing only Steph's 2015-2016 season of 10.4. The next closest player this season is Steph with an OBPM of 8.3. In fact, only nine players league-wide have an OBPM of even five. Everyone on this list will either be an all-star this season or a borderline all-star. And even these all-NBA talents aren't even in the same stratosphere as the Joker. So if this man is having one of the greatest individual seasons ever, why is no one talking about it? Because Curry? Averaging 26, 14, and 6 a game Damn. On nearly 60 averaging that? 80 splits. But it's because and of Curry, though. <laughs> Cousin Curry. Right <laughs> now, the current MVP odds are in favor of Stephen Curry. I know. By Kevin Durant and then Giannis. Yeah, Jane Butler six. Down at fourth with odds that suggest he is far from the MVP. This article's headline doesn't even mention Jokic, like he's some sort of afterthought. And if I had to say why this is, I'd say it comes down to a few things. First, Jokic hasn't had a marquee performance this season. You know, that massive game that makes all the headlines and demands fans and voters to reconsider their MVP hierarchy. Oh, I get that. MVP needs a marquee performance to really draw the masses. Curry did. He people. had multiple. Second, and the most obvious reason, is that the Nuggets aren't doing too hot right now. With a below 500 record of 9 and 10, the Nuggets currently hold the 10th seed in the West. A seed so bad that most fans won't even consider Jokic as a front runner in the MVP race. I mean, but they they get ended though. Though truly valuable, shouldn't his team be winning the vast majority of their games? The short answer is yes, but the actual answer to that question isn't quite as black and white because the Nuggets are winning when Jokic is on the court and surrounded by competent teammates. So far this season, in the 14 games that Jokic has suited up, the Nuggets have outscored their opponents by a combined 48 points. In the five games that Jokic has missed this season, the Nuggets have been outscored by their opponents by 62 points. Shit. Oh, uh, what happened? 
they just did they just did the heat over wrong what I, I mean they ain't had Jimmy Butler but they still just did the heat over wrong with Jokic on the court that's no cap oh this ain't no cap because they for sure just did the heat over wrong they did the heat over wrong I can't even take that from them I ain't gonna lie factuals that means that with Jokic, the Nuggets are a winning team with an average margin of plus 3.4 points. Without him, they're a losing team with an average margin of negative 12.1 points. Sure, the Nuggets have a losing record at the moment, and they're far from a championship contending team. But without Jokic, they are downright atrocious. <laughs> Recently, I asked a friend why people tend to downplay or downright ignore Nikola's excellence. And his answer was simple, but unfortunately, very true. His game is just boring to the purest of basketball fans the joker's game is a work of art he's brilliant. for sure i personally love watching the guy play and i'd even go as far as saying he's one of the curry shooting them threes is wild though fan, nicola's game is curry the shooting them threes though I, that's that's the, that's tough jimmy butler should be high on that too but his game is boring too but his defense boy his, the way he carrying the heat right now yeah, I gotta get him some type of prop, but he just his game is boring too. Jimmy Butler game ain't really that it's that nothing nice. He's shoot the shoot the midi, you know what I'm saying? He shoot the he shoot his little midi boo, you know, pull up midi, do what he do, you know what I'm saying? For the team, whatever, but it ain't that much exciting shit. Display every night. Nicola's excellence is rooted in his ability to break down the game to its simplest components and exploit the other team. He big as hell. Oh, shit, I ain't ability to see two, three, four moves ahead. But it's this very simplicity that deters fans from giving him the credit that he is due. Tim Duncan dealt with a similar problem his entire career. Timmy was so technically sound that he didn't need to be fancy. He didn't need a 45-inch vert or any sort of alien-like ability. He could dominate anyone with a handful of post moves, bank shots, and well-timed rolls to the basket. The man's nickname was literally the big fundamental. And because of this, it took years and years for people to truly see the immense value in Duncan. Nikola will shred a defense for 35 points and 15 assists without even getting a foot off the ground in the process. <laughs> the man will appear to be moving in slow motion and still make your best defender look absolutely lost. He big as hell. Alter a dozen shots on the defensive end without even getting close to blocking one of them. And you'll more than likely never see one of these plays on Sports Center or your favorite sports social media outlet. But when the vast majority of fans get their information and form their opinions based on these short clips and highlights, it's no wonder that Nikola's impact, relevance, and dominance are undervalued. If you were able to somehow remove the hype and narratives from the hey. MVP discussion, the race for the award would look something like this. And that's because this list is exactly that. Basketball references MVP tracker which gives a very objective look into the MVP race at the moment based solely on the numbers. The only list where you'll find Jokic ahead of everyone else. But if the numbers you've seen so far haven't swayed you enough, Jokic's excellence doesn't stop at the offensive end. With a defensive box plus minus of five this season, Jokic yeah. is leading the entire NBA on the defensive end. He big as hell. Massive margin. Yeah. The next closest player is Draymond Green with a DBPM of 3.9. Yeah, they got, they got the best. What did Jimbo that? Believe it or uh, not, four. Nikola's defensive box plus minus this season is the second highest mark ever recorded. I am not exaggerating when I say that Nikola Jokic is currently having arguably the most productive, efficient, and dominant season in NBA history. Now, how's that for value? Hey, that's the NBA. I ain't gonna lie. What Curry doing? What he doing over there with the with the team he got, bro? They gonna go for Curry at time with them having an eighteen. What well, they just lost yesterday? Eighteen and three record. 18 and 3 record? You think they're not going to go for Curry, bro? They over there, he doing it damn near by himself, bro. I mean, yeah, Jordan Poole sometimes had 30. Andrew Drew sometimes get some bucks. You know, he got team. He got teammates that, that's scoring and doing what they got to do and all that. You know what I'm saying? But with Curry doing this without Klay Thompson, without KD, is is crazy, bro. They they had they got the best defense this year. I think they said they got the best defense. They the best defense. They got the best defense. They the best defense team this year. That's what they said, bro. With them doing it, I mean, yeah, it's kind of tough. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, man. If you're the best basketball player, that's what it is. I mean, the season's not over yet, though. You know, the season, you know, numbers, numbers, num numbers change by the day. You know that. You know what I'm saying? You know how fast this up team. Jokic go for 40 one day, and they'll push him up in the, in, the, in the year. You know that. But Jokic, you know, it is what it is.